For me, the biggest question is where do we come from, where do we go to? And you can break this down into two things. One is how does life form and how does solar systems and our own solar system form? And then the other question is how does the universe work fundamentally work with dark matter, dark energy, black holes? Let me start with the first question, life and planets. Uh, we are already at Mars. Uh, we are exploring the whole solar system. We are sending Bepi Colombo to Mercury. And then soon we will send Juice to Jupiter. And hopefully in the next decade we will be able to send uh, also missions to the ice giant planets, uh, Neptune and Uranus, maybe comets uh, and all solar system uh, bodies. And the other topic is the extrasolar planets. We already know many, many extrasolar planets. Uh, we want to study them in detail, but in particular we want to detect an Earth-like planet. So we will send CHAOPS uh, to, into orbit this year, and then the James Webb Space Telescope uh, will be launched soon. Uh, later, Plato, and then Ariel, and so we will have a whole fleet for exoplanet studies. And the holy grail is to discover a truly Earth-like planet and then study that in great detail. Maybe alternative um, uh, life forms or also to trying to find a place where people can go in the very, very distant future. <laughs> Now coming to the uh, fundamental workings of the universe, we have, as I said, the three um, major uncertainties and ignorances, uh, dark matter, dark energy, black holes. <laughs> Uh, dark matter we are studying with X-ray uh, observatories um, and also with Gaia, for instance, or Athena, uh, and currently XMM Newton. We will learn more about dark matter. Um, dark energy, uh, the main topic uh, is uh, uh, done with Euclid. Uh, Euclid uh, will hopefully unravel the nature of dark energy. And then black holes um, will be studied with X-rays and with gravitational waves and in the infrared. So there's a whole series of multi-messenger uh, astronomy that will happen in the next decades. And we say we want to bring the sound to the movies uh, by studying the early black holes. We are in the XMM Newton operations room. XMM Newton is a space observatory from the European Space Agency. As an observatory it's kind of special because there it has telescopes that are not on ground. They are above us, flying around the Earth. Why this? Because we are interested in the extreme universe and the hot and very energetic universe that emits very energetic energy that we call X-rays, uh, produced under extreme conditions, a strong gravity or very high temperatures, 10 or 100 million degrees. And to get this X-ray light, we have to go outside the Earth atmosphere because the Earth absorbs all the X-rays. So we put our telescopes on a spacecraft and launch this spacecraft into an orbit around the Earth. We have it since uh, December 1999. And since then, we are observing the universe in X-rays and discovering how uh, the universe form and evolve from the Big Bang to, to the current uh, uh, shape it has. We observe black holes when the universe was very young and uh, this way we understand how, how they form. We observe stars when they explode, we observe X-ray radiation from stars that may impact the life in planets, we observe counterparts of gravitational waves once, because there have been only one gravitational wave uh, with a, a light counterpart. So in this way we contribute and we continuously uh, get improving our understanding of the universe and whether it's possible to have lights elsewhere or how the universe evolved since the beginning to what we know is now. For all, the, all of these missions that we launch, uh, we retrieve data, we process them here on Earth, and we store all of them here for astronomers and scientists throughout the world to uh, pick this data and analyze, analyze them. So they have extreme value because 
the investment, the human investment that we've put to create those images and those uh, measurements is gigantic. We've built a satellite, we've put it into a rocket, we've launched it to space, we've operated this, and we've managed to send by radio the data down to Earth, processed it to enable discoveries to be made. Uh, and most of this data allow scientists to discover things that couldn't be possible, uh, that couldn't be discovered in any other way. So that's why we keep them, all of them here. Also by putting them together, we allow scientists to cross compare data from different satellites together uh, from a particular object, or we can look at different parts of the, of the universe as a function of time and at, in different wavelengths or, or in different energy ranges. So we host and keep all this data here to enable their scientific exploitation by the scientific community. As I said, this data is open to everyone in the world. They just have to go with an internet browser to our website. Uh, in particular, if they're interested in astronomy, they can go to ESA Sky, which is at sky.esa.int. This is a portal where we have made a visual interface to exploring all the data from all these space missions, including the 28 years of Hubble Space Telescope data, plus all the data from all our own uh, ESA-only missions. Users can go there and look at the sky at any wavelength and um, explore, explore the wave, explore at any zoom level. And they can also retrieve all the, in the, all the uh, original files that were sent from the spacecraft to Earth. So I, we certainly encourage everyone who is interested in astronomy to, to come to this website and play and look for interesting objects because they could have a discovery in the front of their eyes uh, and they might help us, they might help the scientific community understanding uh, what's going on in the different objects.